Right, um, I, I shall be brief. I'm the academic director of the writing school here, and I, I wanted to say something about the, the history of this particular MA program and the evolution of the online uh, component of it. Um, the writing school here was founded in 1999 by Michael Schmidt, um, who's now left this. He's head, currently heading up the program at Glasgow University. Um, but it's found in principle, it has outlived in a sense, in that we, we are united by the conviction that um, this program should be taught by uh, published practicing writers, most of whom have previously been um, editors, publishers, broadcasters, literary journalists. I was doing a quick counting job last night and uh, I found out to my delight and satisfaction that between us we have more than 100 years professional experience outside the academy of doing those other jobs um, around uh, and related to and directly um, arising out of um, commercial writing and publishing in a sense. So we like to feel that we're properly connected to um, the, these other worlds of agenting and publishing and reviewing and so forth. Um, there's a sense in which we're, we're going against the, 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 the grain of, of amateurism, the, 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 the culture which we're aware of elsewhere, of non-writers teaching students to become um, teachers of creative writing, rather like a snake devouring its own tail. Um, that's not exactly what we do. Our MA program currently offers three routes in uh, fiction, poetry, and writing for children. We've got full-time and part-time cohorts uh, both campus-based and since 2002 um, there have been online versions of the novel and poetry MAs. It's a large program. We have about 150 students currently registered on our MA, approximately one third of whom are online students. Um, a point that came up earlier on was the, the international nature of, of distance learning. Uh, we have students in uh, Italy, Finland, France, Canada, um, Nigeria, Oman, uh, Slovakia, Spain, Republic of Ireland, and so forth. Um, also from the remoter parts of the British Islands, places like Cornwall and North East Scotland, which are quite distant from um, other institutions who are teaching writing. We, we teach in the evenings, though of course there are problems with time differences. Most of our students, I think, have full-time jobs, especially the online ones. Many of them are traveling around for business reasons, so the online program suits their professional working patterns quite well. Um, they may be joining us from hotels and, and cyber cafes and such places. Now, I've, I've got up here um, the course content, the requirements of this particular writing program. I'm not going to read it out to you, because I hate it when people do that, they, this will read you what you can see on the screen. It's all there on the website if you want to check it out later. Um, but essentially it's two workshops, two lit courses, a research project, uh, what we call the text unit, which is a series of talks by agents, publicists, editors, journalists, um, the Society of Authors comes in to talk about contracts and uh, the evils of publishers. Um, that is the, the taught part of the the, the MA program. The part-time students are doing that over two years, um, full-time students over one year. Beyond that, uh, there is a writing up year. And at the end of that, we're asking our students to submit a, a portfolio, which is to say a, a full-length typescript, either a book-length collection of poems <coughs> or a complete novel, uh, normally between 80 and 150,000 words. And completion, completion of that book-shaped thing is the crucial um, part, as far as we're concerned. Um, I want to say something about the reading units, because I understand that not all master's programs um, with writing in a title um, believe in, in making a, their students read. Our emphasis is very much on the formal and the technical properties of what we're reading, and Michael is going to say um, a little more about that in a moment, I think. And those editorial conversations which go on um, in the workshops extend into the literature units. Uh, often the questions we're asking are, are the same, they're editorial questions and, and formal questions. Um, the reading courses also give our students 
a canon of formal examples representing a variety of contemporary literature which will be familiar to everyone. Because people come to us, our entry requirement is that you should have a first degree in something, but often that something is not literature, so it could be law or photography. Uh, we have a professor of physics who, who's just signed up. Um, so it's important that we should give our, our students a, a, a set of shared reference points through the lit courses. Um, we also have a very busy program of visiting speakers. Um, that's not part of the, the formal talk element of the course, but it's important. Uh, recently, we've been trying to um, include more online speakers, because if those events are happening on campus, it's, it's the thing that the distance learners can't enjoy. Um, so we, we've been trying to do more of that. Normally, it's live sessions in the chat room. We've had uh, Maria Highland, and Joe Highland, the novelist, who is joining us from a cyber cafe in Rome. Uh, Jane Stevenson, the biographer and novelist who lives in the north of Scotland, again was able to, to do it from home. Um, Alice Oswald visited the university, um, but she can't really type. Um, she doesn't believe in, in telephones or cards. I think she has a horse or a bicycle or something. Um, so she read the questions from the students and, and dictated her replies to me, and I was typing like the wind for about an hour when she visited us. Um, James, I think, is going to say something about our future ambitions in the way of uh, podcasting and, and um, video streaming and so on. Um, I want really to, well, I want to say two more things. The, the first of which is, um, I think this is a program that makes unusual demands of its students, which they warm to and rise to in many ways. Um, Publication isn't the only way you can measure the success of a master's program, uh, but I think it's important, and if nothing were being published, I don't think I would want to work here. We've been quite lucky over the last couple of years, or more than lucky, I mean, I think the, the, the work that goes on in workshops is reaping lavish results. We've had um, something like 20 books published over the last couple of years, um, including some quite high-profile publications, books being translated into other languages, published uh, by major commercial publishers on both sides of the Atlantic. Um, I have some examples here. Fiona Campbell's first novel, um, the three books of poetry by Andrew Forster, Victoria Pugh, Jan Fortune Wood, um, whose son has now signed up for the online MA, um, so, because he delighted his mother so much. Um, Caroline Smales, her first novel, um, translated also into other languages. Um, and partly as a result of that, that publishing success, we've recently been approached by a uh, literary agency in London who wants to set up a mentoring scheme for our graduates. The idea is that we will handpick four of them uh, whose novels will be read, uh, first and second drafts will be read over the course of 12 months after they've graduated. Um, so that they'll get free professional advice on their work in progress. Um, there's also quite a healthy progression from the MA to PhD study, both here and elsewhere. Um, but if the students are remaining here, normally they are not doing critical projects. We don't have a PhD program for the simple reason that I think um, in other places they would give you a PhD for writing rather less than what we ask of our MA students. That's something we're going to have to review um, when the program comes up for revalidation next year. It's hard to see you know, how we could develop beyond the, the vast amount of writing people do for the MA uh, in order to give them something they can call a doctorate. Um, finally, I wanted to say something about the, uh, the downside, my, my own misgivings um, about what we do most of which, um, well, some of which relate to the online version of the MA. Um, we've had all kinds of rows with the administration about our ability to register students who were not uh, EU residents because the MA is a part-time course. There was a regulation which only allowed us to enroll full-time students. And after years of arguing, they finally allow us to do that. Um, but that hand-to-hand -hand fighting with the admin uh, also translates into something that James is going to mention, a, a lack of technical support for the systems we're using. There's also a problem with the invisibility of 
online students. Um, in our discussions with heads of department and deans, um, we find it's very easy, unless we remind them constantly, it's easy for them to forget that, that all of these students are um, very much part of our program. Um, in conclusion, I, I want to say, I think something that Michael's going to pick up on, which is that the, the publication rate is actually very much higher among the people who are doing the online version of the program. And I was wondering why that might be. Um, I can't give a precise answer, but I think, quite simply, they, they take the course more seriously than uh, perhaps some of the campus students do. And also because they're, they're using the, the, the system, they're using WebCT, the, the bulletin boards and the chat room, to talk to each other all the time, um, in, you know, outside of the formal teaching times. Um, and also, of course, we, we select them um, quite scrupulously to begin with, but that's also true of the campus students. I'm going to stop there and hand over to Michael, uh, who's going to talk about the, the nuts and bolts of um, teaching poetry online.